Xiaobin unexpectedly found three dice, which contained a past experience of the original owner. If he could help him fulfill his long-cherished wish, he could obtain magical abilities. However, these three dice actually ask Jobin to confess a hundred times. Even if it's a hundred times, it's just one girl. What if a handsome, young and wealthy second dot generation like him doesn't persist and agrees? Are you going to have a girl or hang up? This is a philosophical question. What? Is this girl named Jiang Nansun? It's okay then. I want everything. Wei Xiaobao's dice, Linghu Chang's qin, Guo Jing's eagle whistle, Zhu's human skin mask these ordinary yet magical items silently tell stories hidden beneath history. As more and more items with magical powers become available, spiritual energy gradually recovers. One day, when history was flipped over by people, they were surprised to find that Jobin surprisingly, he is an immortal. Keywords of the novel Starting from confessing Jiang Nansun a hundred times, there will be no pop-ups for longevity. Starting from confessing Jiang Nansun a hundred times, there will be no pop-ups for longevity. Download the complete set of TXT for longevity. Starting from confessing Jiang Nansun a hundred times, read the latest chapters for longevity. Chapter 1. Confession Failure 100 Times. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Confession Failure 100 Times in March of Yangchun, the Magic City Architecture College. In the season of grass growing and birds flying, handsome men and beautiful women on campus either travel together or play and play, creating a peaceful and peaceful scene. The young men and women still located in the ivory tower have no worries about the future, only pure beauty and joy. In the student era, what students are most passionate about is naturally the school flower and grass of each school. For the vast majority of students, the influence of school grass is obviously inferior to that of the school flowers of major schools. However, there are two alumni of this year's Magic City School of Architecture. Here. Here. He's here again. Accompanied by the exclamation of those around her, the beautiful woman who was reading instinctively lifted her head as she leaned against the pillar of the stone pavilion. A delicate face with a furrowed brow caught the eye. It is Jiang Nansun, one of the school beauties. Seeing the visitor, Jiang Nansun's eyes were filled with helplessness. The person in front of me is a handsome young man who is well dressed and holds 99 roses. Jobin. A freshman who just enrolled last year. He is also a wealthy second dot generation overseas returnee. However, the reason why Jiang Nansun knew the general situation of the other party was naturally because this person was sick. Jiang Nansun, senior sister. From the first time I saw you, I couldn't help but fall in love with you. Today is my 100th day of confession, please give me a chance. Xiaobin held 99 roses in both hands and looked at the beautiful school flower in front of him with a serious and affectionate expression. Promise him. Promise him. Who is this man? How dare he confess Jiang Nansun? I wonder if Jiang Nansun is not only the school bell, but also the second dot generation wealthy. Do you think a man who has 99 roses every day for a hundred consecutive days is a second dot generation wealthy man? Oh my goodness. It's a hundred days. How romantic. If my future boyfriend insists like this, I will definitely marry him, said a girl who is 168 in height and weight. Jiang Nansen's gaze flowed, and the helplessness in his eyes turned into a faint sigh. Faced with the sincerity in the eyes of his junior, even Jiang Nansun, who had no intention of giving the other person any chance, was also under pressure. After all it is really difficult to refuse a young and handsome wealthy second dot generation who has confessed to you continuously for a hundred days. I'm sorry, junior. Due to personal reasons, I can't agree, Jiang Nansun replied seriously as he looked at Xiao Bin. Oh my heart. Jobin covered his chest and took two steps back, his handsome cheeks turning a bit pale. Such a tragic side has left many ignorant melon-eating girls with tears of heartache. 
whispering, Little brother, don't cry, sister hurts you. Oh my, they have confessed their love a hundred times, but still refused. Does this school flower have such high standards? Don't even want to be wealthy or handsome. I heard that Senior Jiang has already been in a relationship, which is why she has been refusing. No wonder, it turns out that the famous flower has a master. This boy is just a slave, even if he has a married woman, he is still flirting. Isn't that better? Dot. The Prime Minister understands me. Don't talk nonsense there, Sister Jiang hasn't agreed yet. She's still single now. Jiang Nansun naturally heard these discussions, but her face remained calm as usual. She has become accustomed to it. From her birth to now, there have been not a thousand male confessions around her, but also eight hundred. A young intern teacher in the same class, at the same level, at the same school, and even after graduating from high school, once showed a good impression of her. Not to mention things like off-campus and off-campus. She has seen all kinds of boys. Inside this boy, there are various appearances. However, she had never seen such a speechless boy before. Ah! Forget it, since Sister Nansun is unwilling to do anything, I won't force her either. Sister! Goodbye! Remember to miss me! Xiao Bin stumbled around and left with a sorrowful expression on his face. Watching the figure leave like a defeated dog, Jiang Nansun rubbed his forehead, feeling a bit annoyed. It's not that Jiang Nansun has a heart of stone, but because this guy is just a lunatic. Have you ever seen someone who goes through this process every day and lasts for a hundred days? Jobin is it. That means he comes once a day, otherwise Jiang Nansun would definitely call the police. However, to be honest, if the other party insists so much, Jiang Nansun is not a steel mill, so he has naturally asked himself before. Do you really have feelings for him? But every time the answer is obvious. No. Not at all. She is actually a girl who pursues spiritual value. Although this kind of confession for a hundred consecutive days may seem a bit romantic, it's a pity that Jobin came late. If Chiao Bin had been a few months earlier, Jiang Nansun might have agreed. Not long ago, Zhang Anren just confessed to her. Although Jiang Nansun did not directly agree, it was actually just a little girl's reserved attitude. Unfortunately, recently Zhang Anren has been busy with his thesis and internship, and various complicated tasks have come one after another, which has forced him to focus more energy on his work and naturally overlooked Jiang Nansun's feelings. Unfortunately, at this moment, Jobin appeared again. It made Jiang Nansun very annoyed. At the same time, there was a slight dissatisfaction with Zhang Anren in my heart. As long as he uses dim sum, he doesn't need a dim sum. Obviously, Xiao Bin's continuous confession over the past hundred days did not make Jiang Nansun agree, but deep down in her heart, she actually had some opinions about her future boyfriend Zhang Anren. Jobin naturally didn't know that his efforts had a glimmer of hope. He is currently in a daze. To be precise, he was staring at something lying in his palm in a daze. These are three ordinary dice. However, at this moment, they were emitting a faint golden glow. Time should start from a hundred days ago. Due to family reasons, shortly after transferring, Jobin found a part-time job as an antique shop assistant in the local area of Mordo. Antique is a great subject. There has always been a saying that antiques in prosperous times and gold in turbulent times. It can be seen that antique shops are a very profitable craft nowadays. However, there is no egg. Although antique shops make a lot of money, there are also many idot catching things to do. So although Jobin has a family background, most of the time he just works as an ordinary janitor. The process is understandable. It's nothing more than a spendthrift spoiling their own things. These three dice are just a pile of junk and debris inside. Dices have never been an antique before. Moreover, the material of these three dice is just ordinary pig bones. This kind of thing, let alone give it to Jobin, 
even if it's kept, it still takes up space. But that day he just accidentally threw it away while cleaning. As a result, three sixes were thrown out. But precisely because of this, since that day, these three dice have become strange. No matter how far he throws the dice, the next morning after midnight, these three dice will all return to him. At first, Jobin thought he was entangled in dirt. I even went to the temple on purpose. As a result, the old monk who claimed to be a master demanded one million yuan. Xiaobin knew that he had no connection with the Buddha. Later, after he accidentally threw three sexes again, the three dice began to emit this faint golden light. As the golden light flashed by, Jobin passed out completely. Of course, when I woke up again, I watched a movie from a third-person perspective. And Jobin finally found out that the original owners of these three dice were the male protagonist of The Deer in the Cauldron, Wei Xiaobao. These three dice are exactly what Wei Xiaobao obtained before entering the palace. After following Wei Xiaobao for many years, it eventually became a testament to Wei Xiaobao's last wish. Xiaobin naturally knew about The Deer and the Cauldron. That is the work of a generation of martial arts master Mr. Jean. However, to my surprise, the person from that book actually existed. However, since it is a testament to one's wishes, there is naturally Wei Xiaobao's wish among these three dice. So what is Wei Xiaobao's last wish? Confess a beautiful woman continuously for one hundred days, and at least once a day. When Jobin learned about this last wish, he almost threw these three dice into the toilet. Compared to Wei Xiaobao, who is not outstanding in terms of age, physique, and appearance, Jobin is definitely the top choice. He is a wealthy second-generation, and also a handsome and wealthy person. He confessed to a girl is it difficult. If she hadn't waited for her confession for a hundred days, the girl would suddenly have a heart attack and agreed. So, is he a girl sitting with a fragrant aroma? Or should we continue to confess with a different person? So in the following period of time, Jobin really got annoyed when he saw these three dice. However, upon arriving at the Magic City School of Architecture, Xiaobin was shocked to find that the target chosen by the three dice was actually Jiang Nansun, one of the school beauties of the Magic City School of Architecture. Later, after investigation, Xiaobin naturally discovered that Jiang Nansun had an ambiguous partner, Zhang Anren. When he heard this news, Jobin was completely refreshed. Since then, he has been confessing for a hundred days. It has to be said that Jiang Nansun is really beautiful. Xiaobin once fantasized that if this senior sister agreed to his confession, it would be great if he could never unlock these magical three dice. But fortunately, Jiang Nansun's senior sister managed to hold on for over a hundred days. Jobin also successfully unlocked these three magical dice. What a happy day damn it! He was stubbornly rejected for a hundred days. This old face has been thrown into the Pacific. So. What's the use of you? Jobin couldn't help but ask as he looked at the three dice in his palm that emitted a faint golden light. He has made up his mind that if these three dice are of no use, he will throw them directly into the toilet. It seemed to sense Jobin's thoughts, and the light of the three dice in his hand gradually became bright. At the same time, the weight of the three dice also gradually increased. Soon, Jobin had to hold up with both hands, so much so that he wished he could throw three dice on the ground. Unfortunately, these three dice were stuck to his palm like glue, unable to be pulled down. Just as Jobin thought his palm was about to be crushed, the three dice suddenly cracked open. Subsequently, three small dice as white as jade appeared in front of him like this. Upon closer inspection, Jobin couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. Ivory dice. These are actually three very rare ivory dice. He just said, how could a dice that can be carried by Wei Xiaobao all along but never abandoned be an ordinary pig bone dice? However, before Jobin could get excited, he felt a darkness before his eyes. A familiar feeling rises leisurely. A young man with a waist clenched and a proud expression appeared in front of Jobin's eyes. 
he knew that this was Wei Xiaobao's residual memory. Subsequently, Wei Xiaobao seemed to open his mouth and want to say something, but the next second, an inexplicable black flame that made his scalp tingle burned away Wei Xiaobao's remnants. However, as Wei Xiaobao's lingering thoughts dissipated, a faint golden light suddenly flooded into Jobin's mind. Ah! Jobin couldn't help but let out a painful cry and hugged his head tightly. After the golden light completely dissipated, Jobin got up from the ground, panting heavily in sweat. With a flip of the wrist, the three ivory dice had lost their previous light golden glow and became as warm as jade. Anyway, these are just three rare ordinary ivory dice. But Jobin blinked his eyes. After just completing Wei Xiaobao's last wish among the three ivory dice, he unexpectedly acquired a skill that looked very insignificant. Acting skills. Yes, Jobin never thought that he would actually acquire the acting skills of Wei Xiaobao. I thought it was some kind of special ability. After all, hasn't Wei Xiaobao been to Longmai? But I never thought it would be acting skills. Is this thing useful? Xiao Bin is not sure how high Wei Xiaobao's acting level is. Anyway, he didn't want to become an artist. Jokes, if you think he's a second dot generation wealthy man, what kind of actor would he become? Isn't that because he's sick? Besides, isn't it all just a little fresh meat cutthroat these days? Where else is there any living space for the acting school? So this thing is really a chicken rib. Forget it, it's also a pleasant surprise. However compared to the reward obtained by completing the last wish on the dice, Jobin looked at his feet. A mistake made under his feet, and the instant sensation of pushing his back caused Jobin to bump his head into the wall. Although it was painful from being hit, Jobin's face showed ecstasy. What surprised Jobin completely was that these three dice followed Wei Xiaobao for a long time. So Jobin has almost finished reading the story of The Deer in the Cauldron in its entirety. He naturally acquired a peculiar ability. God's actions are ever dot changing. This is a top dot notch lightness skill from The Deer and the Cauldron. It can be driven without internal force. It was Junan who taught Wei Xiaobao for his safety. Xiao Bin has read Wei Xiaobao's entire life, so naturally he has also learned. What is lightness skill? Many people are confused about this issue, and most of them have only a partial understanding. But after watching the teaching of the nine difficulties, Jobin came to a conclusion. A person's speed has a limit. The existence of lightness skills is to make human speed exceed this limit. Although Chiao Bin learned the castration version of the divine transformation and did not have the method of using internal power, it is precisely this thing that is absolutely sufficient for him now. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Trial of Nyodao's Acting Skills You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 2 Trial of Nyodao's Acting Skills What can a modern person do with a light function that can be used without the need for internal power drive? The answer is it's of no use. This is true. Who still relies on their feet to drive now? On campus, there are things like walking machines. And after this thing moves, it needs to be focused, otherwise it's easy to bump into something strange. The school district of the Magic City School of Architecture is not small. So most students use walking machines and bicycles. Xiao Bin is at least a wealthy second dot generation. The commuting machine is gone. There is one Phoenix brand with two or eight big bars. It is said that this car was originally the tank used by my father when he pursued his mother. Belonging to is a family inheritance. So, besides being able to make people eat two more bowls of rice than usual, lightness skills are of no use. Fortunately, this is just a side effect. And you can also exercise and eat more. It can also be considered an interesting skill. Since Wei Xiaobao's last wish in the dice has been fulfilled, then the controversy over this matter should have come to an end. Right. However, reality tells Jobin that he is really overthinking. Just when Jobin returned to the dormitory at night, intending to rest, 
he heard someone looking for him. Looking at the gloating face of the classmate who came to call him, Jobin knew there was nothing good. And indeed. The person looking for him turned out to be Zhang Anren, the prospective boyfriend of Jiang Nansun. I heard it's your kid who's causing trouble for my girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Xiao Bin looked up and down at the other person and asked in a humorous tone, Did Sister Nansun agree to you? You. Don't have to worry about it. Zhang Anren said recklessly, Anyway, she's my girlfriend. Ha. Xiao Bin seemed to have heard a big joke and asked back with a smile, You don't want to put gold on your face anymore. If Nansun Xuejie didn't agree to you, how dare you call yourself her boyfriend? Are you trying to ruin Nansun Shuejie's reputation and innocence? How dare you come out to find me like this? Bah! Damn it! You! You! Zhang Anren was so angry that he pointed at Xiao Bin, unable to squeeze out a word. Oh my! Shouldn't I hit you in the pain and make you angry? Zhou Bin trembled with fear, as if a little white lotus was about to face the ravages of a storm. Old Paper is openly pursuing Sister Nansun, acting honestly and looking down on you the most. You are such a petty person who can't fight but come behind to cause trouble. Bah! Just like you, Sister Nansun still likes you. You really feel unworthy for Sister. Xiao Bin held his arm with disdainful eyes and looked at Zhang Anren disdainfully. Grasp the grass. The third one is so eloquent. Look at that teaching assistant Zhang, he's so angry that he's trembling all over. He shouldn't have any infectious diseases, right? Don't pass them on to us. As soon as this sentence was spoken, the onlookers around took a step back in unison. I, I. Anyway, you can't get close to Nansun again in the future. Otherwise, I. Otherwise, what would you do? Jobin looked up and down his disdain growing stronger. You wouldn't say that you're going to hit me, would you? I can tell you, I have a genetic heart disease. If I get scared, you'll have to pay for the hospital expenses. Don't tell me, you can't even afford a few hundred thousand yuan. Also, with so many people as witnesses, if you're going to take action, I'll have to call the police. You. I, you. Zhang Anren was so angry that his face turned red and his neck was thick. He gritted his back teeth tightly and looked at the despicable bastard in front of him, tightly clenching his fists. Among the onlookers, the roommates in room 403 of Xiaobin's dormitory also looked absurd. Ah! Uh, what should I do? Looking at the expression on Lao San's face, Lao Zhi even wanted to hit him. Shu! Stop talking! Didn't you see that assistant Zhang is almost furious? TSK TSK, this is the first time I know that Aubin's mouth is really amazing. Humph. I'm too lazy to talk to you. If you get any closer to Nansun, I'll have no end with you. Zhang Anren became angry and embarrassed until the end, but only left a scene sentence before turning around and leaving slightly embarrassed. Oh my. Are you still not a man? Why don't you have any temper at all? Jobin continued chattering behind him. Zhang Anren's footsteps have accelerated. He's afraid. He is afraid that if he stays any longer, he will want to take action. This bastard. How dare you threaten him? Unfortunately, the situation is so big and there are so many onlookers around. If he really takes action, the consequences will be unimaginable. He still has to take the postgraduate entrance examination, but he doesn't want to leave any record. This bastard. Isn't it said in TV dramas that villains only know how to act recklessly without thinking? That's right, in Zhang Anren's eyes, Xiao Bin is a complete villain. I actually understand it on second thought. Despite knowing that Jiang Nansun had a boyfriend, he confessed for a hundred days in a row. And he's also wealthy and handsome. What is it that Jobin is not a big villain? Unfortunately, Zhang Anren has been busy with work recently and has ignored Jiang Nansen's repeated reluctance to speak. 
It was his roommate who told him before that Jiang Nansun had been confessed for a hundred days. It made Jean Anren very embarrassed. So when his head was hot, Jean Anren came to Chiao Bin to argue. Unexpectedly, Jobin's mouth could really anger the dead and the living. Not only did he not teach him a lesson, but he also made himself so embarrassed. At this moment, Jean Anren hated Xiao Bin to death. After Jean Anren left, seeing that the excitement had subsided, the onlookers left with a satisfied expression on their faces. Of course, before leaving, everyone gave Jobin a thumbs up one by one. Jobin smiled and clenched his fists at everyone. Just about a sentence like, Thank you, Mr. Jiang Dong, for supporting us. Jobin went back and boasted to his roommates without mentioning it. When everyone had enough trouble and went to wash up one by one, Jobin came to the mirror and looked at himself in the mirror, feeling unfamiliar for a moment. That's right, obviously the appearance of that despicable person who didn't pay for his life just now is not his own personality. But rather Wei Xiaobao's acting skills. Xiaobin never expected that Wei Xiaobao's acting skills would have such a weight. Just a small attempt, a few words unexpectedly made Zhang Anren, who was in a fierce situation, flee in embarrassment. Still young. Jobin looked in the mirror and suddenly said. Hmm. What are you doing, third brother? Chu Jingxian, the youngest roommate in the dormitory, asked in confusion. I said I'm still too young. I should have just invited Nan Sun to witness it together. Chu Jingxuan thought carefully about the scene and suddenly shuddered. If I were to be so embarrassed in front of my girlfriend and be talked about breaking the defense in just a few words, it would be a big deduction for the girl. Not to mention that the two are not yet boyfriend and girlfriend, even if they are already boyfriend and girlfriend, it is likely that if a girl really comes here, she will have any dissatisfaction with her boyfriend. Of course, it is not ruled out that when encountering a girl with a romantic mind, one may blame Jobin in turn. But no matter what, Jiang Nansun doesn't seem to be the kind of ordinary woman with a romantic mind. Third brother, you're really black. Chu Jingxian said seriously. Xiao Bin. Do you believe that tomorrow morning's breakfast is gone? Baba. You are my own Baba. Chu Jingxian completely bowed to the evil forces at this moment. In college, you can have a girlfriend, but you can't have breakfast. You may not have taken enough credits, but you cannot have breakfast. If you can have free prostitution, then you must have breakfast. Hey, fourth, why are you so disgusting? You even called third dad, said the eldest Zhang Weilong with a disdainful expression on his face. Pooh. The boss of fish lips, what do you know? Baba is going to bring breakfast tomorrow morning. Dad. I'm your long lost son. Zhang Weilong slipped and knelt, hugging Xiao Bin's thigh. Grab the grass. Xiao Bin almost kicked him away. This bastard rubbed his tears and snot against his pants. Um, did I walk into the wrong room? Fu Xian, the second brother outside the door, looked up at the dormitory sign above his head and said suspiciously, Why did I see Chang Wei playing Laifu as soon as I came back? San Gu said that he will bring breakfast tomorrow morning. Dad. Jobin looked silently at his son lying on the ground with a skeptical expression on his face. Is it reasonable to have an extra group of sons without a girlfriend? Three roommates nodded in unison. Reasonable. That's too reasonable. Jobin choked silently. The next morning, Jobin returned with breakfast. Three sons snatched breakfast and quickly forgot about their father. Jobin is very sad. Jobin is very sad. Xiaobin flaunted two bowls of rice in a row. Grab the grass. Third brother, have you been eating a lot lately? Chu Jingxian said in surprise on the side. I'm still young and growing, so I need to eat more, Jobin explained seriously. Chu Jingxian. Dot. Third, are you still going to confess today? Zhang Weilong, who was scrolling through his phone, suddenly looked up and asked. Although Jobin really wanted to refuse, 
he no longer had the motivation to go. But he didn't understand why Zhang Weilong was so enthusiastic. What happened, seriously? Ah. Uh. Third, your accent is so addictive. Someone saw Zhang Anren and Jiang Nansun pressing on the green belt. Pressing the green belt. Then not pressing the hemp. Ah. Uh. Third brother, I was wrong. Chu Jingxian said with a lewd expression. Halfway through the conversation, he was directly suppressed by Jobin. Don't learn well at a young age. Speak up. Have you been watching movies behind our backs lately? Give up your inventory and we won't die. Jobin said seriously. Third, if you don't let go of fourth again, he will really die. Fu Xian explained on the side. So. Third, are you going or not? No. Xiaobin let go of Chu Jingxuan and lazily occupied his bed. He said helplessly, watching someone show off their love is just a way to make trouble for himself, isn't it? What's wrong? Third, you gave up. Zhang Weilong's eyes lit up and he asked curiously. Grab the grass. Boss, that look in your eyes just now. So dangerous. Third brother, boss was just planning to have an affair with you. Ah. Boss, I was wrong. Chu Jingxuan instinctively said, but was soon suppressed by Zhang Weilong. Ha. Huh. Fu Xian, who had just finished washing up, looked at the sign again in surprise and asked in confusion, why do you play poker early in the morning? Is it so open? Grab the grass. Second, don't run. Not running is a fool. Jobin could only sigh as he watched his roommates chase out all the way. It's great to be young. Oh, by the way, I'm only 19, so it's okay. Jobin looked out the window with a smile on his face. I just feel the air is so fresh. Grass. Who really threw the stinky shoes at the window? Really wake up. Life needs to continue. After announcing complete abandonment after a hundred days of unsuccessful confessions, Jobin experienced a period of minor distress. Hey, what should I do? It's not my fault that this charm is too great. Watching his boss work tirelessly on duty, carrying a sack of love letters on his back, and then staring at him intently, Jobin obediently closed his mouth. These girls. I haven't seen a man in eight lifetimes, have I? What's the point? Isn't Jobin just a little taller, more handsome, and more attractive? Bah! Is he a little richer? What's the point? Boss, in our place, this is called Pan LV Deng Xiaoxian. Grass. Stop talking. It's heart-wrenching. Zhang Weilong said with a sorrowful expression as he covered his chest. Boss, it's fake, it's really fake. Fu Xian was not outside at last, but roast with a look of disgust, I'll give you three points. I'll give you two points, Jobin raised his hand. I'll give it a point. Oh my. Chu Jingxuan instinctively followed, but turned around and was hit by Zhang Weilong, causing a commotion. Third, what a big deal, isn't it just a school flower? This is such a big demon city, there aren't many school flowers. But boss, I heard that even in the entire magic city, in the same class or even in the top and bottom five classes, apart from Zhu Sua Sua, there is no school flower that can match Jiang Nansen's appearance. Moreover, Zhu Sua Sua Sua's appearance is actually weaker than Jiang Nansen's, but Zhu Sua Sua Sua's temperament is more bright and generous, lively and cheerful, which is completely different from Jiang Nansen's kind of big lady. Oh. Boss, why did you hit me again? Chu Jingxian held her head and shouted with a sorrowful expression. If you don't know how to speak, speak more. Old paper won't make you a fool, I'll write my name upside down. Zhang Weilong clenched his fist seriously. Long Wei Zhang. Your name sounds good, boss. Long can still break the rules. Fu Xian rose aside. Second, do you have any dissatisfaction with me? 
Zhang Weilong stared at Fu Xian, insisting that if he said a wrong word, he would look good. Boss, my second brother has a girlfriend, Xiao Bin silently repaired his knife on the side. I'm holding my breath. Upon hearing these words, Zhang Weilong covered his chest and said in pain, How dare this bastard have a girlfriend? Hey, there's nothing I can do. I'm not as wealthy and handsome as my third son. I just went to school with my girlfriend since we were young, Fu Xian said helplessly. Grass. Still a childhood sweetheart. Cut him off. Let you pretend to be forced. Zhang Weilong gave an order, and the three big men rushed forward. Pressure pulse belt. Pressure pulse belt. After enough commotion, a few people lazily collapsed on the lower bunk bed. Second brother, I heard that there are also beautiful women in my sister. In Law's dormitory. Chu Jingxian asked. Yeah, Fu Xinli said naturally, it looks okay, but it's still not as good. Looking as your sister. In Law. Grass. In this way, our personal attacks are only for the sake of it. Zhang Weilong complained. Second brother, let my sister. In Law invite my roommates out to socialize. Let's meet up too, so that third brother can quickly get out of the shadow of heartbreak. Chu Jingxian said casually. Hey. Asterisk 3, end of this chapter. Chapter 3. Failed Friendship. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 3 Failed Friendship Xiao Bin. Who's heartbroken? Zhang Wei Long. All right. All right. Boss, do you know that your current appearance is very lewd? Fu Xian joked. Grass. You're so full that a man doesn't know how hungry a man is. Of course you don't understand the thoughts of single dogs like us. Cough. Boss, I just talked about a girlfriend. Chu Jingxian weakly raised his hand. Zhang Weilong directly petrochemical. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Just fart and die these two bastards, right? Zhang Weilong wailed. Sure, fourth brother, where are the younger siblings? Jobin didn't have any envy or jealousy, he was just a little curious. Hey, I can't compare with my second sister. In law, just from Shida, Chu Jingxuan said with a silly smile, and even showed a few people photos of her girlfriend. Although Chu Jingxuan seems to always lack a string and look foolish, in fact, Chu Jingxuan's height and image are not inferior to Xiaobin's. At a height of 182, his skin is a bit dark in terms of appearance, but his face is slender and his facial features are also very outstanding. He usually wears a pair of elegant and vulgar glasses. Before Jobin arrived at the Magic City School of Architecture, he had always been at the class grass level. In the novel, the male protagonist dare not say that those warm-hearted male leads are definitely the standard appearance. Looking at the girl in the photo with the same appearance and figure, Zhang Weilong turned into a screaming chicken. Started daily wailing. Ignoring the howling of the defeated dog on the side, Jobin was somewhat surprised and said, Not bad, fourth brother. Sisters can do it. Hee hee, I can't compete with Sister Nansun, but. It's great, he said, but he chuckled foolishly. Grass. I really want to kill him. Kill him. Zhang Weilong was even more stimulated. Xiaobin seemed to have gone too far and quickly changed the topic. Second, how about it? Let your wife's dormitory associate with us. I'll go ask, after all, I also need to ask the little sister's thoughts, Fu Xian replied. Cough. Second brother, should I go too? Chu Jingxian coughed lightly and shamelessly asked. Grass. Why are you still looking at the pot while eating from the bowl? Isn't that too much? Third brother. Cut him off. Zhang Weilong was completely angry and went forward to capture him, pressing Chu Jingxian under his body. Boss, come on. I'll go get the lubricating oil. The sound of click. Click, came from behind. 
Zhang Weilong turned around and almost got so angry that his eyes were filled with smoke. Xiao Bin, this bastard, surprisingly took a photo with Fu Xian, holding his phone and shooting at them for a while. Seeing Zhang Weilong, he had already discovered two people, and they went straight to scatter birds and beasts. Mom! Zhang Weilong is going to kill someone. The entire 403 is filled with joyful laughter. The next morning, Fu Xian received a call from his girlfriend. Boss, they agreed, but isn't our number a bit small? Xiao. How could it be? Zhang Weilong ignored and pointed at his Chijingxuan, saying expressionlessly. They are also four people's dormitories. Apart from my wife, there are three more, but we only have you and the third, so we can't let the other girl live on her own, can we? Second brother. And me. Chu Jingxian pointed to himself and said. You are so pissed off. Fu Xian complained angrily. The rabbit doesn't eat the grass beside the nest yet. Why do you want to have two boats? Oh my. Second brother, what are you saying? Who said that socializing is just for the purpose of dating? I'm just helping the little sister complete her studies, Chu Jingxian said seriously. As he was speaking, his phone rang wildly. Lao Si. Xiao Bin patted Chu Jingxuan's shoulder with emotion on his face, and then said seriously, Last night when you went to wash up, your phone rang. We were worried about something, so we picked it up. It was your girlfriend. Chu Jingxuan's body trembled, and his legs were already a bit weak. I prove. What the third person said is true, Fu Xian agreed. We told our sister dot in dot law about the weekend reunion, Zhang Weilong made the final decision. You. You. Chu Jingxian covered her chest and wailed sorrowfully, how could you do this? Puff. All right, all right, we're teasing you. Your wife didn't call yesterday, wouldn't you check your communication records? Jobin joked with a smile. Ah. The tears on Chu Jingxuan's face suddenly froze. But if you don't answer the phone again. Fu Xian reminded. I, I'll settle accounts with you when I come back. Chu Jingxian angrily put down a harsh sentence and then walked out with his phone in hand. Daring. The three of them trembled in unison. Daring. Nauseous. I've had enough of Lao Si's ability to speak in such a disgusting voice. Zhang Weilong was so angry that he almost separated from his body. When Chu Jingxian returned, it was naturally a joyful dormitory routine. In the blink of an eye, it was the weekend. Because there was no class, a group of people lingered until noon before slowly getting up. Then wash up, change clothes, and start tidying up. Oh my! Boss, you have acne. Fu Xian said in surprise as if he had discovered the new world. Yeah, sigh. Zhang Weilong actually felt like he was going to finish tonight when he discovered it in the morning. At this moment, Chu Jingxuan and Xiaobin walked in one by one. The two of them were still holding food in their hands. Third, what cosmetics do you use on weekdays? Your skin is so good. Zhang Weilong decided to ask Xiao Bin, who had the best skin condition, for advice. Hey! Cosmetics! What are you doing with that thing? Jobin asked in confusion. Boss, don't ask. The third person is naturally beautiful, and he doesn't have that thing at all. A piece of soap, a towel, a pair of toothpaste, and a toothbrush, it's gone. Fu Xian said to himself, piercing his heart. Lao Si. Zhang Weilong gritted his teeth and suppressed his angry voice, asking seriously, what about you? Don't tell me, you are also naturally beautiful. Ah, uh, boss, I'm using the bao. Chu Jingxian was very sensible and quickly took out his essential items from the cabinet. Zhang Weilong's face only became more attractive now. However, Zhang Weilong still hesitated a bit. My skin is not very suitable. Do you have any other recommendations? 
Looking at the three people gathered together to discuss what cosmetics are better to use, Jobin beside him was confused. Are these three seriously ill? What cosmetics are boys discussing? However, subconsciously touching his cheek, Jobin felt lost in thought. He felt strange before. In theory, such a magical dice, with only acting as a useless chicken rib reward, how did it exist for hundreds of years? Now, thinking about it, it should be because Wei Xiaobao is quite special. After all, he is essentially just an ordinary person who knows lightness skills. So the benefits it brings are not obvious. But this benefit did indeed enhance himself. That's why I don't need any skincare products or anything like that. TSK TSK, fortunately my own appearance is very impressive, otherwise wouldn't it be considered plastic surgery? Shaking his head, Jobin didn't show much interest in tonight's gathering. Yes, after getting used to Jiang Nansen's beauty, in his eyes, a typical beauty is basically no different from a red-pink skeleton. However, looking at Zhang Weilong's excited expression, Xiao Bin's refusal words couldn't be uttered. He doesn't care if he has a girlfriend. After all, where did a girlfriend become a superhero? But his boss is so thirsty that he can't refuse directly. After all, if you don't go to the dormitory party, how embarrassing would it be for everyone to bow their heads and look up? Even if it's just sitting over there for a while, at least it's still there. A rush of busyness. In the evening, upon receiving a text message from the informant. Fu Xian's wife, all 403 dormitories were mobilized. Of course, in reality, there were only three, mainly Chu Jingxuan who followed the three of them closely. Although somewhat speechless, the three of them ignored him. The meeting place is naturally a hotel near Fu Xian's daughter. In Law's school. As for why not come to their side of course, it's for safety. No one would think that just the first day of socializing would be enough to invite a girl out and have fun, right? After arriving at the place and waiting for a full half hour, Fu Xian's wife walked over with everyone in the dormitory. Surprisingly, apart from Fu Xian's wife, only one person came to his wife's dormitory. Sorry, I didn't know. These little hooves have all secretly touched someone else, here's the only one left. Fu Xian's wife looked helpless. Xiao Bin smiled and patted Zhang Weilong's shoulder, jokingly saying, Boss, it's up to you. Third, you. Zhang Weilong was deeply moved. But before he could say anything more, Fu Xian's wife had already made arrangements. He he, hello everyone. This is Xiao Kue, the fourth in our dormitory. Xiao Kue, this is Fu Xian's roommate. Both parties begin to introduce themselves. Since both parties only have one single person, the others naturally tacitly gave way. However, as he watched the person chatting with Zhang Weilong, his gaze occasionally scanned towards Xiao Bin's little Kue, and Xiao Bin felt that he should leave. After sitting for a while, I pretended that my phone was ringing, so I turned around to answer the phone. After a while, I felt almost there, so I went back and asked to take a step first. Although there was obvious disappointment, Xiao Kue naturally wouldn't say much in such an occasion. After Xiao Bin left, his phone vibrated. It's a text message from the boss. Thank you very much. Jobin smiled and casually put his phone into his pocket. After looking at the sky, I took the bus back directly. However, what surprised Jobin was that when he arrived at the dormitory, a group of people actually arrived first. Watching his eldest son's dejected expression, Xiaobin cleverly pulled Chu Jingxian out. Upon closer examination, it turned out that after Xiaobin left, Xiao Kue used the excuse that it was getting late and the dormitory was about to close, so she had to leave. Others have no choice, after all, this is just a friendship, not a blind date. So everyone had to part ways unhappily. Scratching his head, Jobin didn't know what to say for a moment. After all, the other girl didn't take a liking to you. Do you still want to force them? So this kind of thing really can't be persuaded. 
The unhappy reunion caused Zhang Weilong to be negative for a few days. Fortunately, our boss seemed to have been accustomed to being beaten, so a few days later, he regained his vitality. Architecture courses are relatively dull. It is necessary to record a large amount of data. We also need to calculate. Without a certain foundation in mathematics, one cannot learn. Fortunately, it seems that DICE have also improved his overall physical fitness, so it's not difficult to jot down these things. In the blink of an eye, another week has passed. This weekend, Xiaobin took advantage of the weekend to go to Rongbaozai, where he usually works. Mo Du Rongbao Zhai is not a popular online store. But it is a century-old antique shop. It is said that the boss's ancestors were engaged in related industries. Later on, he came to the magic city and established the name Rongbaozai. Now it has also reached the hands of the current boss Li Fan. Li Fan is a friendly-looking little old man in his fifties. Vaguely, it can be seen from his eyebrows that this young man was also a handsome man. Rongbaozai is at least a time.honored brand that has been passed down for a hundred years. So business is not bad. There are three guys like Jobin in total. Jobin is a temporary worker because he is still in school. The other two companions are Li Fan's apprentices. Li Fan also has a son. Unfortunately, his son was not interested in inheriting the shop of his ancestors. So Li Fan could only accept two apprentices. Xiaobin once asked Li Fan why he had to accept two apprentices. Aren't he afraid that someone has ulterior motives? Li Fan smiled and did not provide an answer at the time. After some thought, Xiaobin realized that this was probably the wisdom of the ancients. Why do many people, even though they know that the other party has ulterior motives, still accept them as disciples? Firstly, these people who later had ulterior motives were considered gentle, respectful, and frugal in the past. Secondly, raising Gu. Generally speaking, the habit of the older generation of craftsmen is to have around three apprentices. There can only be more, not less. The advantage of doing this is that one can divide what they have learned into several parts and pass it on to their apprentices, without the strange situation of teaching apprentices to starve their masters. Secondly, an ambitious disciple is actually better than a weak disciple in everything. Although such apprentices are generally prone to backlash. But it must be admitted that it is precisely because of this villainous disciple that his other disciples were able to work harder and devote themselves to learning technology. In other words, the bad disciple is a catfish. Some people only raise tigers as a threat, and catfish have turned into whales. Some did not cultivate talent, while the good one disappeared first. Li Fan has a heart to cultivate Xiao Bin. Because in Li Fan's view, Xiao Bin has a deep understanding of the antique industry due to his family background. As long as he cultivates talents, he is a master in the industry. Unfortunately, Jobin only came here to work and earn money. Although he is a wealthy second-generation, he is not the kind of wealthy second-generation who spends money recklessly. The total cost of a set on one's body will not exceed 200 yuan per day. Why? The family tradition is like this. So, is there any mention of various foolish fork operations by the wealthy second-generation in the novel? Yes. There is. But definitely not Jobin. The Chiao family doesn't have so much nonsense. If you dare to learn bad, Joe's father will just draw out seven wolves. I absolutely guarantee that you won't act recklessly anymore. From childhood to adulthood, Joe's father has broken seven seven wolves in one go. And Joe's father clearly has a set of skills in his hands. I guarantee that there will be no redness or swelling left the next day after the fight, but it is definitely the kind that can be excruciating. It's outrageous. Xiao Bin has reason to suspect that Xiao's father smoked him because he had practiced. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Visiting Guests You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Visiting Guests After receiving the guests, it's already 8 p.m. 
Aubin is exhausted, isn't he? Come on, take a break. Li Fan's second disciple, Li Er, walked over with T. Both of Li Fan's disciples were orphans adopted by Li Fan. Li Yi and Li Er, whose names are very simple. However, what made Xiao Bin sigh was that both Li Yi and Li Er were good. At least for now, both of them have a good attitude towards him as a potential junior brother. Thank you, second brother. Xiao Bin said thank you, but he didn't drink it. Instead, he took advantage of Li Er's lack of attention and poured the tea. He himself cannot drink tea. Mainly, drinking makes one even more thirsty. It seems to be an allergic constitution. So when he goes out, he never touches these things. While chatting with Li Er about the big mountain, suddenly a sound of a car braking came from outside the door. With the crisp sound of Do Do S high heels stepping on the cement floor, a beautiful red figure walked into Rombau Studio. Li Er and Xiao Bin, who were chatting, were pleasantly surprised. This is a beautiful woman who can be considered the top choice in both body shape and appearance. Wearing a red suit, paired with fiery red lips, with cascading wavy hair draped diagonally over the shoulders, a branded handbag slung across the fragrant shoulders, and a pair of red high heels under the feet. A perfect flame sexy beauty. Xiao Bin secretly compared him to Jiang Nansun in his heart never mind, although Miss Nansun may not have the same appearance as the one in front of her, her figure is indeed not as good as the one in front of her. Perhaps only another school flower, Ju Soa Soa Soa, can be compared. However, it is also regrettable to say that when Jobin came to school, Sister Zhu Suasua had already started her internship. I usually don't go back to school on weekdays, and even if I do, I may not be able to be met by Jobin. So Jobin really hasn't seen Zhu Suolok. But he knew that the person in front of him was definitely not Zhu Suasua Suo. Although Zhu Suasua follows a sexy style, in fact, Zhu Soa Soa's family background is average, and he belongs to those who live with relatives. I can't afford a bag on this woman's body. Li Er's eyes are a bit straight. Fortunately, Li Er's professional qualities helped him recover quickly, and he smiled and took the initiative to greet him. Hello, beautiful customer. What can I do for you? Well, take a look. The beautiful woman's voice was slightly hoarse, and she looked left and right, seemingly curious about Rombo's eye. When I saw Jobin, my eyes couldn't help but brighten up. However, what made the beautiful woman raise eyebrows was that after seeing her, Jobin didn't seem to pay attention to her side. Oh, man! A hint of disdain flashed in the beautiful woman's eyes. She has seen many men like this. It's a bit gloomy to some extent. Usually, she would only secretly scrutinize her, but when she looked over, she looked like a quail, deceiving herself. Beauty is somewhat contemptuous. So naturally, he became lazier and more indifferent to him. Looking around, I started to stroll. What is Jobin doing? At this moment, Xiaobin was touching the dice in his pocket with an eyebrow raised, feeling slightly lost. These three dice won't be lost, so Jobin decided to keep them by his side. Usually I stuff it in my pocket. After all, it's not big either. But to his surprise, at this moment these three ivory dice emitted some peculiar fluctuation, and it seemed to be still dimly brightening. Because Jobin came to work, he was dressed quite thick and had not yet shown any signs of it. Strange, what happened? Before Jobin could figure it out, his heart suddenly moved and he instinctively looked out the door. Accompanied by the sound of footsteps, a figure appeared at the door. This is a tightly wrapped middle dot aged man with sunglasses on his face, and his facial features are not clearly visible. Wearing a grey coat, she looked like a peculiar figure from a TV drama. The key is that behind this middle dot aged man, there is actually a rectangular short door panel wrapped in black canvas on his back. At this moment, the jumping of the three dice seemed more and more obvious. Hello sir, may I ask if there is anything I can help you with? Jobin greeted with a smile. Selling a piano. 
The man's voice was quite hoarse and sounded a bit rough. Jobin smiled and asked, Can I take a look? Can. Speaking, he took off the piano behind him and placed it on the table. Wait until the other party takes off the black canvas and moves away, then Jobin comes forward. This is a Nietzschean. This is Jobin's first impression. The style of the Guccine looks very ordinary, and the materials used are not particularly special. But this is indeed a Guccine. Can I get started? Jobin asked again. Can. Jobin just stepped forward and touched it calmly. A faint, indistinguishable light golden light faded from the Guccine into Jobin's palm. A hint of surprise flashed in Jobin's eyes, but due to the dice's acting skills, his surprise did not show. And because his gaze was always on the piano, he was not noticed by the middle dot aged person. Although Jobin was pleasantly surprised, he did not forget his job. After making a simple judgment, Jobin looked up and shouted loudly. Second brother, come and palm your eyes. Sorry, Miss Jiang, please forgive me. Li Er smiled and bowed, taking the initiative to walk over. The beautiful woman surnamed Jiang followed over with some curiosity. After all, this kind of thing that appears to be a business deal is still very scary. Li Er smiled and said a few words to the middle dot aged man before starting to check his piano. After a thorough examination, Li Er looked at the other person calmly and then smiled at Xiao Bin. Abin, talk about it. Looking at Li Er's eyes, which had a hint of being a test taker, Xiao Bin smiled and explained. This should be a Ni Qin from the Song dynasty, but the specific age cannot be determined. The material and materials of this Ni Qin are secondary, but there are two characters Yen, on the Qin, which should be a gift from a woman to her lover. Unfortunately, although this Qin is old and has high collection value, its actual value is not high. Isn't this a Guqin? Miss Jiang beside couldn't help but ask, I remember producing a Qianlong Qin before, which sold for 14 million yuan. Ah, Miss Jiang, Li Er said with a smile, Guqin is not priced higher based on its age. So although this Guqin is even older, it is just an ordinary Guqin. Is the price. Speaking of which, after obtaining approval, Li Er lightly stroked the strings with his hand. Surprisingly, this qin, which has been passed down for over a thousand years, has a clear and bright sound, like the chirping of birds. At this moment, a person walked out from behind. It is Li Fan, the head of Rombao Studio. Master, Li Er quickly said hello. Oh. Gu Qin. Li Fan laughed and walked forward with a smile. This is my master, the master of Rombao Studio, Li Er introduced. The middle dot aged man didn't speak either, he just looked at his piano and didn't know what to think. After a brief glance, Li Fan smiled and asked about their judgment. After listening, Li Fan smiled and didn't speak. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Yin Yu Qin. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 5 Yin Yu Qin, Master, is there anything wrong? Li Er felt a little uneasy. No, Li Fan shook his head and said with a smile, Keep going. Li Er let go of his worries and smiled, saying, Our rules at Rombozai are to clearly mark the price. Although this Qin has a decent sound, it is not blessed by celebrities, so the price is only around 18 to 20 pieces. However, if we accept it, we can only offer a price of 150,000 yuan. The beautiful woman beside couldn't help but shudder. After listening to such a long introduction before, I thought it wasn't very good, but it turned out that a piano costs 200,000 yuan. As a result, Rambo Ozai was only willing to accept 150,000 yuan. It's really black. But upon careful consideration, they open their doors for business, not charity, and this price surprisingly, it is somewhat reasonable. And the key is to provide the actual price. So the beautiful woman suddenly thought that the middle dot aged man had taken advantage. The middle dot aged man hesitated for a moment and silently nodded. 
Li Erd smiled and went to make the payment. After the person left, the beautiful woman curiously asked, Masterly, does this Qin really have so many? A few people laughed but remained silent. Seeing a few people not speaking, the beautiful woman was somewhat dissatisfied, but no one here would tell her, so she had to leave reluctantly. Although the beauty didn't buy anything, at least she still looks good. Looking at Xiao Bin, who was a bit restless, Li Fan smiled, thinking that Xiao Bin was interested in him. After some thought, Li Fan still advised. Ah Bin. Master Li. That's Jiang Lai, the eldest lady of the Magic City Jiang family. Don't think about it. Oh. Ah. Hey, Master Li, I didn't think of her, I was thinking of that Qin. Oh, what's going on? You're in a heartbeat. Well, Jobin said awkwardly, I've been liking that Qin since I saw it. Oh, if you want it, I'll sell it to you for 150,000 yuan. Ah. What's the deal then? In this case, I'll give you 200,000 yuan. I can't let you work hard for nothing. There's no such rule. Xiao Bin quickly ran to find Li Er to settle the bill. Li Er looked at Xiao Bin with a ridiculous expression on his face. Ah Bin, you have so much money, why do you come here to work? Li Fan also couldn't help but laugh and cry. I originally thought that Jobin was facing family difficulties and working part dot time, but who knew that he was experiencing life? Ah! This money is my lucky money. I'm still a student, so there's no income, Xiao Bin said naturally. TSK Tisk. Li Fan became increasingly satisfied. Xiao Bin is a second dot generation wealthy person, that's right. But it doesn't have the same bad habits as other wealthy second dot generation people. It's a bit enviable. The tutoring of the Chiao family is quite good. After making the payment, Jobin happily obtained this Ni Qin. Li Er came over just to change shifts. So after the handover, Jobin finished work. After waiting for a while, Jobin went to the piano shop next door with a Ni Qin. I bought a piano box put the knee piano away, and happily went back. After returning to the dormitory and joking with a few roommates for a while, I went to wash up. But after returning, Jobin had a headache. After all, this chin is a musical instrument. It was played in the dormitory building at night, which obviously caused some disturbance to the public. Let's rent a house tomorrow. The thought flashed through my heart. Although the people in the dormitory were somewhat reluctant, they still chose to support Jobin's move out. The guide Xiaobin notified and then went to rent a house. When moving, it was a few roommates who helped. Of course, everyone had another meal and later decided to gather when they had time next month. After a lot of tinkering, it's already three days later. Xiaobin bid farewell to everyone, only then did he have time to examine the new treasure. After these days of contemplation, Jobin felt that this kind of treasure digging emotion became even stronger. I was actually a bit too eager. After calming down and taking a few deep breaths, this person calmed down a lot. Then open the piano box, pull off the black canvas, and gently flick the strings with your fingers. Accompanied by a familiar darkness before my eyes. But when Jobin woke up, the place where he appeared was actually in front of an antique bamboo hut. Surrounded by a large group of people, hula hula. This group of people can be vaguely divided into two columns. One column is mainly composed of middle-aged people dressed as scholars with a long sword in their hands, while the other column is led by an elderly man with a fat head and big ears, a bearded face, and a nine-ring golden sword in his hand. With a movement in his heart, Jobin vaguely guessed their identities. Such distinctive features, combined with this time and place it seems that it is a story in Laughing Proud Jianghu, where Ling Huchong was suspected of secretly hiding demon-repellent sword technique due to Laughing Proud Jianghu music score. He was suspected by his master and the Lin families in Law's Wang family, and thus found the green bamboo wang from the outskirts of Luoyang to come and evaluate. 
Because it was the first time experiencing these stories from a first-person perspective, Jobin felt a bit awkward. But soon, he heard the sound of the piano ringing in his ear. Soon, with the sound of the piano, Jobin's eyes lit up and he listened carefully. At least it can be considered as a family background. Xiao Bin is completely clueless about the melody of the Qin, at least he doesn't know anything about it. Okay, he just doesn't understand. Although I don't understand, the sound of this Qin first was the green bamboo wang, but his piano skills were not high. He only played a few times before the strings broke. Later, I invited out my aunt. At the beginning, it was played the same as the green bamboo wang, but later on, as it rose higher and higher, the melody of the chin unexpectedly took on a perilous journey, lifting weights lightly and effortlessly turning it up. This piece of music is sometimes passionate and sometimes gentle and elegant. Although you may not understand the music theory, you feel that the melody played by this ant is calm and moderate, making you only feel the beauty of the music. After playing for a long time, the melody of the chin gradually slowed down, as if the music could not stay far away. Instead, it was like the person playing the chin had walked several tens of zhang away and then several miles away, with subtle details that could hardly be heard anymore. After finishing the song, the plot continues. But Jobin's whole mind was concentrated on that song just now. I feel like my desires are still lingering, but they are full of regrets. In my dazed memory, a melody that was far more stunning than this one now flowed with my memory. When the melody stopped, Jobin realized that he was crying unconsciously. When he woke up, he found out that his master, mother, and others had left. Later, Ling Hu Chong began learning the piano with his aunt. This study it's January. One month later, Auntie presented the Yen language Qin as a gift, and after that, the two reunited in the martial arts world, but it was also a long time later. The Yen Yu Qin accompanied Ling Hu Chong throughout his life. Standing from the first perspective, Xiao Bin brought Ling Hu Chong's life into view. He can't change anything. Some can only experience everything in the book from a third person perspective. Everything it's like it really happened before my own eyes. At the bottom of West Lake, Shaolin Temple, Five Sacred Mountains Conference, on Haimu Cliff after Ling Hu Chong and Ren Yingying Ko sang, laughing in the Jianghu, all the scenes completely disappeared. I finished watching the little movie. Xiao Bin suddenly felt a little dry mouthed. I poured myself a glass of water, but unfortunately there was no popcorn. Just as Jobin felt his mouth dry and his tongue dry, he suddenly felt a warm heat rising from Dantian. Its internal power. Jobin, who had already been using internal power in the short movie, instantly realized it. However, when he tried to cultivate this internal power, he realized that he didn't even know the most ordinary internal power techniques. Shaking his head, Jobin felt a little regretful. It seems that the reward for stealing cannot be achieved. Now it's time to see what exactly made Ling Hu Chong regret for life. Xiao Bin attempted to use the unexpected internal power he had previously obtained to touch the Yen Yu Qin. As a familiar feeling came, Zhou Bin's eyes darkened once again. When he woke up, a clear figure appeared in front of him. It is Ling Hu Chong's obsession. Compared to Wei Xiao Bao, Ling Hu Chong has a much larger deck. Not only does it look more realistic than Wei Xiao Bao, but it also resembles a real person. More importantly, the Ling Hu Chong that Xiao Bin saw, just like Wei Xiao Bao, was his youthful appearance in the plot. Are you a destined person? Ling Hu Chong looked up and down and asked curiously. However, before Zhou Bin could ask clearly, the eerie black flame burst out again. Then in an instant, the remnants of Ling Hu Chong were burned to ashes. Xiao Bin hesitated for a moment, then felt a little relieved. Ling Hu Chong's strength actually, it mainly focuses on swordsmanship. On the contrary, his internal skills are not outstanding. Although he practiced the Yi Jin Jing, the time he learned was too short. Until the end of Laughing Proud Jianghu, his cultivation time was only two years. 
The internal power previously cultivated and the internal power absorbed from the star absorbing technique have all been fully absorbed. So it can be said that he is equivalent to a retake. Even if Ling Hu Chong has exceptional talent, what can he achieve in one or two years? Can it still withstand others for ten years in a year? If Ling Hu Chong really has this talent, how could the Huashan sect possibly become lonely? Why did Lao Yu bother to abandon this disciple and go and learn the demon repellent sword manual? So in a high probability, it's just two to three years of internal strength. As for why the combat effectiveness is strong in the later stage of course, it is because his cultivation of Dugu Jiujian is powerful. However, the memories in his obsession began in Green Bamboo Lane, when Ling Hu Chong had already learned Dugu Jiujian. Although Jobin probably knows some moves, he doesn't know the method of luck, so naturally he can't get a full view. However the only surprise that surprised Jobin was that he learned the Yi Jin Jing. In Obsession, everything about the Yi Jin Jing is narrated in detail. Xiaobin can finally officially cultivate damn it. The Yi Jin Jing is a very evil martial art. If you covet the progress of martial arts and try to use it for cultivation, you will definitely waste your life and make no progress. But if you don't take the initiative to cultivate and let nature take its course, then this martial arts skill will gradually start. Even Ling Hu Chong in the original work did not achieve any success in cultivation, and his internal strength remained useless until the end. How did an ordinary person like Xiao Bin cultivate it? And the key is that Fang Zheng Tuolu only promised Ren Yingying to teach Ling Hu Chong the method to solve the exotic true qi, but what about the others? Obviously, it is impossible to impart. In other words, what Ling Hu Chong learned was only the way to dissolve his own exotic internal forces, not the complete Yi Jin Jing. So even if you practice, apart from becoming a tool person for internal energy storage, it won't be of much use. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Jiang Lies Suffering You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Jiang Lies Suffering At first glance, it seems that neither of Jobin's rewards have been very impressive. But Xiaobin vaguely felt that his perception was wrong. But what exactly went wrong was not clear for a moment. However, as he understood the requirements of the Yen Yuqin, Jobin's gaze slightly froze as he looked at the Ni Qin in front of him, and the corners of his mouth twitched slightly. Do your wife know what you're doing? Jobin was really speechless. Because Ling Hu Chang's requirements for this Yen Yu Qin are surprisingly bizarre. It actually asked Jobin to loudly say, I love you, three times to a wealthy girl. The first figure that flashed through Xiao Bin's mind was not Jiang Nansun, who had confessed his love for a hundred days, but the Miss Jiang Lai from the Jiang family who had just met. With a thud in his heart, Jobin's face showed a hint of bitterness. God knows if this Qin is crazy. For a completely unfamiliar, even unfamiliar girl, and also a super rich second dot generation who shouts, I love you, three times in a row. I'm afraid someone might have called the police and arrested me immediately. Is Ling Hu Chong not seriously ill? After careful consideration, Jobin realized with melancholy this matter is probably true. Ling Hu Chong lived a carefree life, but the first half of his life was definitely filled with frustration and bitterness. He wants to be carefree and carefree in the world. But reality tells him that the righteous are hypocritical, while the villains are arrogant. All rivers and lakes are birds of a feather. His beloved junior sister moved on to another love, but was brutally stabbed in the back, watching as Yu Ling Shan died in his arms. Although later moved by Ren Yingying's emotions, both Ling Hu Chong and Ren Yingying knew that there had always been a place in Ling Hu Chong's heart, the owner of that place it's called Yu Ling Shan. So Ling Hu Chong took it for granted that he could never muster the courage to say, I love you, to his crush. Although Xiao Bin can understand Ling Hu Chong, it's him who is feeling uncomfortable now. You don't have to lose face in front of everyone, do you? Zhou Bin let out a sigh of frustration as he looked at the unusually quiet Ni Qin in front of him. He was surprised, why are the requirements for each of these treasures so bizarre? Let's discuss, 
can we switch to someone else? Xiaobin tentatively asked, it's okay to switch to senior sister Jiang Nansun. Senior sister Jiang Nansun's personality. Well, it doesn't seem like you Ling Shan, but... But neither does Jiang Lai. You should give a response. Yen Yuqin. Dot. If you don't answer, then I'll assume you agree by default, Jobin asked loudly. Result the Yen Yuqin suddenly lit up twice. Xiaobin was so angry that he almost smashed the piano. Grab the grass. You're going too far. Jobin was so angry that his liver hurt. This bastard. You really acknowledge Jiang Lai. But upon careful consideration, what made Jobin feel creepy was that the image of Yu Lingshan in the little movie he had just watched in his memory was strangely replaced by Jiang Lai's face. Is this Nima suitable? Jobin was really powerless to roast. Although he also knew that Yu Lingshan's personality was closer to Jiang Lai. They are all spoiled and spoiled from a young age, they are all unruly and capricious, and they are also very cute a ghost. Why does he think Jiang Lai is cute? Hey! That's too much. If you continue to affect me, I'll throw you into the shredder and physically eliminate you. Yen Yuqin. Dot. Covering his forehead, facing this Ni Qin that only knew how to accept death, Jobin felt really helpless. If it weren't for the fact that Jiang Nansun had confessed his love for a hundred consecutive days before, it wouldn't be impossible to say three times to Jiang Lai that I love you. After all, Jiang Lai is very beautiful and has a good figure. But the problem is that there is no ifs. Although Chiao Bin's pursuit of Jiang Nansun only spread on a small scale. But if I remember correctly, Jiang Nansun should have known Jiang Lai. After all, the circle of the demon capital is so small. Jiang Nansun is a wealthy second generation and a lady from a wealthy family. Why is it strange to know a top-tier wealthy second generation like Jiang Lai? Moreover, their looks are on par, each with their own unique strengths. Even if they don't know each other, they must have heard of each other's names. The circle of wealthy and wealthy socialites is already very small. It's all from the same place again. If you don't know the other person's recent situation, it's probably quite difficult. So if Jobin were to rush to confess Jiang Lai in such a situation, the result would probably not be as simple as being beaten up. Jiang Nansun is a wealthy lady. Isn't Jiang Lai the same? On the contrary, until the end of the series, Jiang Lai was also a wealthy young lady. But Jiang Nansun's family was in decline. Although this is related to their fate, it can also be seen that the gap between the two is quite large. A man that even Jiang Nansun doesn't want, would the grandiose Miss Jiang of the Jiang family still want him? Are you looking down on Jiang Lai? Do you still look down upon all the wealthy second dot generation? It's a headache. Xiao Bin covered his eyebrows and felt a moment of silence. However, while worrying, Jobin suddenly thought of something. Why did Jiang Lai appear in Rombao Studio? Is she going to buy some antiques? As wealthy second dot generation individuals like them, they only pay attention to so dot called antiques when giving gifts, right? After thinking for a while, Xiao Binsi realized that only in such a situation would Jiang Lai, a wealthy and romantic second dot generation, come to the antique street to Taobao. I just don't know if she wants a Ni Qin or not. The Yin Yu Qin trembles with a rustling sound. Xiao Bin ignored the spiritual Ni Qin and began to analyze Jiang Lai as a person. Obviously, after trying to change the target without success, in order to obtain rewards, one can only try to conquer Jiang Lai. I just hope this wealthy lady doesn't have to be too difficult to handle. Thinking of this, Jobin felt a headache. He's not a lover, how could he possibly get to know girls? It seems that some are busy. After conducting a thorough investigation for three days, Xiaobin finally sorted out some superficial images of Jiang Lai. Firstly, Jiang Lai is a very unruly and willful girl with a strong and handsome demeanor. Or it can be described as fierce. 
a form of style, clothing, and clothing, all like fiery women who are red and bustling. A handsome young man is pursuing her. It is said to be the second generation of someone rich. There are rumors that Jiang Lai's brother Jiang Haokuan seems dissatisfied with that kid, so he has been sending people to obstruct both sides. However, Jiang Lai has a very strong personality. I am currently competing on the arena with Jiang Haokuan. This is the most news that Jobin can learn. As for who the young man pursuing Jiang Lai is, Jiang Lai's wealth, and what kind of family Jiang's family is behind him, he is not clear. I only know that Jiang Haokuan is a successful businessman. Recently, he has frequently attended various occasions with his elegant and tall girlfriend, and it seems that he has plans to make it public. No, such a wealthy man's actions are already equivalent to being public, right? The only difference was an engagement ceremony. Of course, although only one step is missing, it may take some time to complete. So what does this have to do with Jiang Lai buying antiques? Does Jiang Lai still want to please her future sister in law and buy antiques for her? Jiang Haokuan is not very old, is he? In his thirties, his girlfriend couldn't be in her forties or fifties, could she? So there is a high probability of only thirty, or even eighteen. Would someone like antiques at this age? If it weren't for her liking, would it be Jiang Lai's family? Yes. Only when it is given as a gift to her family, will she, as a super wealthy second dot generation, come to personally choose. So based on the existing information analysis, is it because her elders are celebrating their birthdays and Jiang Lai came to buy antiques in order to gain the support of the family in their struggle with Jiang Haokuan? After all, the older generation likes this meaningful old thing. Money comes second, and the key is to be meaningful and loved by the elderly. Assuming this conjecture holds. So what is the high probability that Jiang Lai will give away? Since they are family elders, they should not be parents or anything like that. Although I haven't heard from Jiang Lai's parents, judging from the tense situation between their siblings, neither of their parents is likely present. Only when their parents are absent, the older generation cannot intervene in such matters. After all, Jiang Haokuan is in charge of the Jiang family now. Are those their grandparents? Very likely. Since they are grandparents, the gifts given should be things like Guanin and Jade Buddha. After all, the Jiang family is a wealthy family, so Jiang Haokuan shouldn't be unfilial, right? Other things are really not rare for a wealthy family. Only those antique Jade Buddhas and Guanin are favored by the elderly, and they are also suitable for giving gifts. It's better to be the kind you found yourself, that's even better. Jobin scratched his head, feeling a bit tricky. There are many Jade Buddha and Guanin. Antiques are not difficult either. But if you want to pick up the leak and get it yourself, it's almost no different from fantasy. Jobin was lost in thought. Equals just when Jobin was at a loss, Jiang Lai was also very distressed recently. Recently, Jiang Lai has been very annoyed because Jiang Haokuan wants to publicly announce his engagement to Gan Jing. She always believed that Gan Jing was not a good woman. Jiang Lai, who grew up in an orphanage with his brother since childhood, actually has a feeling of being like a father to his own brother. So Jiang Lai really doesn't want his brother to fall in love with a woman who worships money. However, Jiang Haokuan was obsessed and insisted on marrying this woman whom she looked down upon everywhere. Unfortunately, the current family business of the Jiang family is all inherited by Jiang Haokuan. Although Jiang Lai doesn't feel sorry, his own brother's refusal to listen is very headache-inducing. This makes Jiang Lai very distressed. Recently, the old dean of the orphanage celebrated his birthday. As the guardians of the two during their childhood, the old dean showed great kindness towards them. Jiang Lai wanted to ask the old dean to make the decision and not let his brother marry Gan Jing. The old dean has no hobbies, he just likes strange stones. It's not that expensive jade. But rather strange stones. Many strange stones, with the skillful hands of the old dean, 
can even depict various vivid images. When Jiang Lai was a child, he admired the clever and skilled old Dean very much. So these days, Jiang Lai has visited all the antique shops in the entire magic city, just to be able to personally find a strange stone. But this is too difficult. Chishir. What kind of stone can be considered a peculiar stone? In Jiang Lai's limited knowledge of antiques, a beautiful stone is a peculiar one. Ancient stones are extraordinary stones. However, a few days ago when I was in Rambozai, I was told by the shop owner that the older things are, the more valuable they are. At the same time, Jiang Lai also witnessed the birth of a Guqin trade with his own eyes. Later, after inquiring, to her knowledge, the Tang Dynasty Qin was very difficult to define due to its lack of personal name, and its value was not high. However, even so, that Qin was worth 300,000 yuan. By 150000, sell 300000. Double it. Terrifying. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Public Funded Tourism you are listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 7 Public Funded Tourism But this is an antique. This means that the Qin called Yenyu is not well known and cannot define who its former owner was. Otherwise, the price of this Ni Qin will definitely double several times. The antique circle has always been filled with two situations. Drilling holes and picking up leaks. It's like two poles, making countless people crazy about it. Enjoy the excitement of getting rich. However, Jiang Lai has little interest in antiques. If it weren't for giving gifts to the old dean, she wouldn't have come here. As Jiang Lai watched the old dean's birthday approaching, he could not find a stone that could be called extraordinary, which clearly made him feel very frustrated. Just as Jiang Lai was feeling frustrated, Chen Fang called. Chen Fang is a phoenix man. I have been pursuing Jiang Lai recently. Jiang Lai also has a good sense of aging. A hard-working, interesting, and handsome boy. When it comes to being handsome, suddenly the young clerk I saw in Rambozai a few days ago came to mind. Coming to his senses, Jiang Lai couldn't help but feel a bit amused. What's wrong with her? Surprisingly drool over a handsome stranger. Is it an endocrine disorder caused by recent internal heat? Although he was having wild thoughts in his heart, Jiang Lai still answered the phone. Daring. Chen Fang's voice rang out and he said with a smile, Did you miss me? Think, what can I do for you? Fortunately, he had long been accustomed to Jiang Lai's directness. Chen Fang smiled and said, Aren't you looking for strange stones lately? There will be a Jade Raw Stone auction in Shenzhen recently, how about it? Are you interested? Jade Raw Stone. Jiang Lai's eyes lit up. Yeah, if you buy a piece of Jadeite Raw Stone and give it back to the old Dean, he might agree to it. Besides, this is a large dot scale auction, not just the Jadeite Raw Stone, so there may be other strange stones coming. Are you coming? Chen Fang asked with a smile. Okay, Jiang Lai naturally wouldn't refuse. Can I arrange accommodation for you? Don't worry, I'll give you the invoice then, Chen Fang said with a smile. Oh, you still understand me, okay, then I'll go straight. Meet and chat, love you. Well, Jiang Lai responded and hung up the phone with a smile. Call the driver and ask him to book the fastest flight to Shenzhen for himself. Equals at this moment, Jobin is in class. This is a mentor's class. However, most students are actually secretly scrutinizing Jobin. After 100 days of confession, Jobin became a prominent figure in the entire Magic City School of Architecture. Although in the end, they did not successfully hold the beauty back. But with such persistence and perseverance, it naturally captivated a group of classmates and senior sisters in the same class. After all, they are still students in the ivory tower, have not yet undergone the baptism of society, and still retain the innocence of college students. Or rather, clear stupidity. The instructor clearly knew about Jobin, 
so he asked Jobin to answer a few questions in class. Unexpectedly, Jobin's basic knowledge was very solid. This undoubtedly greatly appreciated by the instructor. After class, the guide stopped Jobin who was preparing to leave. Jobin, come with me to the office. Good supervisor. With a reassuring look at the roommates who were originally in the dormitory, Jobin followed the supervisor to the office. A loud noise immediately came from the classroom behind. Arriving at the office, Guide Su Chang sat on the office chair and saw Xiao Bin looking at him. He smiled and said, Don't be nervous, there's something good going on. Then he took out a document from the drawer of the table. After confirming the accuracy, it was handed to Jobin. Jobin took it with both hands. A satisfied smile flashed in Su Chang's eyes. Although Su Chang is only five or six years older than Xiao Bin. Strictly speaking, it can be considered a peer. But Su Chang is a guide, that is, a teacher. Xiao Bin's respect clearly satisfies Su Chang very much. Recently, there has been a new discovery in the archaeological community in Yangzhou, which is said to be a site from the Kangxi period of the Qing dynasty. It has recently attracted a group of academic experts to visit. Our school has been allocated a spot, led by Vice President Li Guodong and Director Li, while others follow in to see the world. Good behavior, don't embarrass me. Yes. Chang Jie. Xiao Bin pretended to bow. Oh, all right, it's Saturday, which is 8 o'clock a.m. the day after tomorrow. The school will reimburse the transportation and accommodation expenses, so it's better to consider it as a trip. Yes. Hee hee, all right, go back and prepare, Su Chang said with a smile. Ensure completion of the task. Jobin saluted again in a mischievous tone. As Su Chang watched Xiao Bin leave, a mysterious smile appeared on his face. I don't know if he would be startled to see his colleagues on Saturday morning. Su Chang thought with disgust. Time is approaching the weekend quickly. Jobin woke up early. I was originally planning to keep the Yen Yuqin at home. After all, this thing is too big and somewhat inconvenient. Unfortunately, the Yen Yuqin kept flashing. Xiao Bin was worried about arousing suspicion, so he had no choice but to put the Yen Yuqin into the box and carry it on his back. Yangzhou is not far from Modu. It takes three hours by car and over two hours by train to arrive. So even toiletries are not needed. After all, we will be staying at a hotel, so if it's really not possible, we can go by another set. Although spending is relatively frugal on weekdays, Jobin is not the kind of person who sticks to it. There is still a bit of existence in terms of quality of life. Although family values thrift, one cannot lose their quality of life. Besides, I don't have much money either. If it's a big deal, I'll bring it back. Of course, the main issue is the trouble. After all, carrying a piano case on your back would be too troublesome if you were carrying a large or small bag. Upon arriving at the agreed-upon location, Jobin realized that he was actually the first to arrive. He was not surprised either. After all, he has never had the habit of being waited for. It's normal to come half an hour early. Just waiting, suddenly I heard someone calling me behind me. Are you Chiao Bin's junior brother? A slightly heroic female voice sounded behind her. Jobin turned around and was slightly surprised. The newcomer turned out to be a tall and beautiful woman with a handsome appearance and a decent figure. With a movement in his heart, Xiao Bin looked at the beautiful woman in front of him and tentatively asked, Sister Zhu Soa Soa. Oh. You actually know me. Zhu Soa Soa was a bit surprised and joked, shouldn't you be planning on pursuing me? My senior sister laughed, Xiao Bin said generously. I've heard that my senior sister is one of the beauties of our school this year, but I haven't had the chance to meet her. Let me formally introduce myself. My name is Xiao Bin, a freshman in ancient architecture. Oh, look, you're getting serious now, it's really boring. Zhu Suasua was a bit disappointed. 
I thought I could see Jobin's panicked expression. Who would have thought that she was so generous, but instead she seemed a bit excessive. With this in mind, Zhu Suasua said solemnly, let me formally introduce myself. My name is Zhu Suasua, from the fourth year of ancient architecture. Two people shake hands. To the surprise of Zhu Sualak, Xiaobin only held half of his hand. Obviously, this is a move that can easily arouse a girl's liking. Because Li Guodong hasn't come yet, the two naturally started chatting. Miss Zhu. Oh, what kind of pig senior sister? It sounds so unpleasant. Just call me Sister Lok Lok, Zhu Lok Lok said with a smile. Okay, Sister Lok, I heard you dropped out of school before. Jobin asked curiously. At this moment, Jobin was like a small fan who wanted to ask questions about certain things after encountering a celebrity artist. Zhu Suasua smiled and nodded happily. Yes, but later teacher Li Guodong still pulled me back, Zhu Suasua said with emotion. Jobin blinked his eyes and nodded thoughtfully. As a school flower, there is no personal privacy. Zhu Sualak can also be considered a quirk in the architecture department of the Magic City. The reason why it is said to be bizarre. It's because Zhu Suasua spends very little time at school on weekdays. She came to school more to visit Li Guodong and Jiang Nansun. I am busy with work on weekdays. It is said that her family conditions are not very good and she stays with her aunt. So although she is a student of the Magic City School of Architecture, she is rarely seen on campus. Considering that every time I confess to Jiang Nansun during the day, it is normal not to encounter Zhu Suasuo. However, in this way, Jobin greatly admired it. A girl who still works in a Sino-Japanese joint venture foreign company must be very hardworking. But this senior sister loves to laugh. Her face has always been filled with a sunny and healthy beauty. The hardware conditions themselves are here, and the personal personality is also bright and generous, friendly and sincere. No wonder such a girl can be called one of the two school beauties. And miraculously, it is also very interesting that Zhu Suasua's female fans far surpassed Jiang Nansen's female fans. Why? What have you been watching me do? Have you fallen in love with me? Zhu Suasua joked with a smile. Lock sister. Jobin explained with a mix of tears and laughter, I just finally understand why you are the school flower of our school. So. Zhu Suasua's eyes rolled and he asked with a mischievous smile, how is it compared to Nansun? Ah. Uh. Spring orchids and autumn chrysanthemums, everyone has their own preferences, Jobin thought for a moment and gave an answer. No, there must be one good and one bad. Am I the good one or the bad one? Zhu Suasua's eyes flashed with a hint of cunning, and he joked with a mischievous smile. This. Jobin felt helpless for a moment. Let's talk about Jiang Nansun, Zhu Suasua may not be willing. But let's talk about Zhu Sualak. Didn't he be fooling around chasing Jiang Nansun for 100 days before? When it spreads, he will become a villain who forgets his true colors. The situation where these two ends are blocked is really, lock, you're being difficult again. A gentle angry voice sounded behind Jobin. Xiao Bin turned around and saw that it was actually Jiang Nansun. Jiang Shuejie. Are you going too? Xiao Bin looked at Jiang Nansun in a daze, a bit stunned. He never expected to meet Jiang Nansun in such an occasion. Although Xiao Bin asked himself, he didn't really have any scenes of love at first sight for Jiang Nansun. After all, that was just acting. But seeing it again at this moment clearly feels a little awkward. You're such a person. Zhu Suasua joked with a smile, do you think you're already a top scorer in the Dragon Province? We're not bad either, Nan Sun. First place every year, recognized as a top student. Lock the lock. Jiang Nan Sun, facing his best friend's teasing, clearly felt a little awkward in front of Chiao Bin. Although she didn't have any feelings for Zhou Bin in her heart. But at this moment, the two of them are somewhat awkward. 
After all even if the parties involved don't care about things between two people, what about outsiders? After all, everyone is just a layman. End of this chapter. Chapter 8. Hotel Piano Practice. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9. Professor Lee's Plan. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Professor Lee's Plan The original version of Bi Xiao Yin naturally does not hypnotize. But who allowed Xiao Bin to inherit Ling Hu Chang's finger and string? The piano technique in this realm, although previously due to Zhou Bin's unfamiliarity with this instrument, could not fully unleash his true strength, possibly not even 1% or even 1,000th of his original strength. That's why it sounds messy. It's no different from incomplete five tones. But as his proficiency increased, Jobin gradually adapted to this piano and his true strength also showed up. The song, Bi Xiao Yin, is an original piece from the original work. But in memory, it has become a true piece of music. The melody is empty and thought-provoking. There is a sense of relaxation and tranquility. In other words, the hypnotic effect is outstanding. Xiaobin did not start from scratch, but inherited the realm of Ling Hu Chang's finger and string, and gradually added proficiency. When the proficiency of this song is full, the natural effect displayed is very outstanding. The speed of learning cannot be inferred from common sense. So, although it was only half an hour, I have already learned this piece of music. Of course, this speed is definitely considered slow for a truly skilled Qin player who points to string. But considering that Jobin is also playing the piano for the first time, this speed is also quite impressive. Or rather abnormal. When we arrived at the restaurant, we went to pick lunch together with Su Chang. Because it's a buffet, the portions are full. And due to the cost, there are quite a few delicacies and delicacies. The two of them turned around and only then did they realize that Li Guodong had already arrived. Su Chang went forward with great desperation to help, but Xiao Bin looked around but didn't get close. My supervisor is Professor Li's graduate student. What's wrong with trying to please my supervisor? In ancient times, this was a master. Like a teacher like a father. Of course, it's also because Professor Li is amazing. Previously, out of curiosity, Xiao Bin also searched for some information about Professor Li. Then I was shocked. Professor Li is an expert in ancient architecture in China. It's an expert, not a bricklayer. What does it mean? If ancient architecture is a pyramid structure, then Professor Li stands at the top of the entire ancient architecture pyramid that one. Yes, he is the strongest. No wonder such a big shot has such an opportunity, and no wonder their own director is so unscrupulous. Just as Xiao Bin was sighing, Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua also arrived. Actually, Su Chang had already called two women first. But it's inevitable to have some trouble letting girls go out. So it was only then that we arrived. Fortunately, Professor Li was gentle and didn't get angry about it. He greeted him with a smile and started eating. Professor Li seems to have some tradition in his body. So I'm not willing to talk during meals. Su Chang is busy trying to please his mentor, so naturally he won't say much. Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua are at least beautiful women, always elegant. Xiao Bin received education from a young age, which was to eat silently and sleep silently. So although there are many people at this table, it is very quiet. But the way a few people eat is quite interesting. Li Guodong likes to let the food cool before eating, so he eats slowly. Su Chang can learn from others, but sometimes he can get started in a hurry. But at this moment, they often sneak a glance at Li Guodong and then put down their hands with a guilty conscience, continuing to struggle with chopsticks. Jiang Nansun looks like a perfect lady from a wealthy family. Chewing slowly, the lady is full of elegance. Zhu Sua Sua is very casual, and his sitting posture is not very attractive. But the advantage lies in her good looks. 
watching her eat truly fulfills that beautiful and delicious sentence. On the contrary, it was Jobin watching Xiaobin flaunt two bowls of rice without saying a word, and then go to get them again, Su Chang couldn't help but ask, are you a pig? Cough. Li Guodong coughed for a moment and then glared at Su Chang. Su Chang remained speechless. Jobin awkwardly stopped his steps. For a moment, it's not surprising to leave, not to leave. Don't worry about her, young person. It's normal to exercise a lot and have a larger appetite. Li Guodong smiled and cleared the situation. Jobin breathed a sigh of relief, smiled and thanked him, and quickly ran to fetch food. Teacher. I feel like I've been abandoned. Su Chang muttered discontentedly on the side. Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua chuckled on the side. Li Guodong gave Su Chang a tearful and amused glare, but looking at Xiao Bin's figure, he felt lost in thought. Ah, Su Chang sighed, feeling a wave of annoyance in his heart. My mentor has fallen in love with a freshman. This is a bit uncomfortable. My own students have become my own junior brothers. What kind of thing is this? Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua glanced at each other and saw the surprise in each other's eyes. Why does Principal Li Guodong treat Xiao Bin differently? Does this rich second generation junior brother have any special background? This five dot star hotel, theoretically speaking, should have a very good sound insulation effect. But Jobin's piano sound still spread out. Jiang and Zhu's rooms are located at the innermost, while Xiao Bin's room is located at the outermost. So the sound of Jobin's piano did not reach the two of them. On the contrary, Li Guodong and Su Chang clearly heard the sound of the qin. Su Chang only felt hypnotic after listening. Li Guodong, as a master figure in the field of ancient architecture, naturally understands music, chess, calligraphy, and painting. He could clearly understand what level Jobin had reached with his playing of the piano. Moreover, since I had signaled that Jobin would also come, I naturally have some understanding of Jobin's family. It is precisely because of this that Li Guodong conceived the idea of accepting Xiao Bin as his disciple. Of course, now it's called a graduate student. In fact, it's not that Xiao Bin has any breakthrough research in the field of ancient architecture, but simply that Xiao Bin's family has money. It sounds a bit unbelievable. But this is the truth. In the field of ancient architecture, passion is not enough. Having talent is not enough. Money is the key. It sounds a bit unbelievable. But in fact, this is the truth. The knowledge learned in any industry is always just knowledge. If you want to integrate, the first thing is to spend money. Not only do we need to cultivate our own aesthetics, but we also need to understand various ways. Chin, chess, calligraphy, and painting are all small paths, playing is the right path. This play is not about children jumping on airplanes, but about the accumulation of solid historical knowledge. What cricket gourd, bird cage, bowl for fighting crickets in addition, what other elements in gossip, qi men dun jia, feng shui yi shu even worse, one also needs to study medicine, academia anyway, what you can think of, what you can't think of, you have to learn ancient architecture. Why? Because ancient architecture itself is a very comprehensive discipline. Unlike modern architecture and western architecture, the construction of ancient Chinese architecture was not simply arranged. There are also many tricks. Like feng shui, like symbolism however, all these things come together and cost money. Although it may seem tacky, it is impossible to learn ancient architecture well without certain financial support. This is a subject that is more complex and complex than pure medicine. And it even includes some disciplines such as medical psychology. So you know why Li Guodong is very optimistic about Xiao Bin. Of course, in the team we brought today, besides Su Chang and Zhu Suasua, Li Guodong's other favorite is Jiang Nansun. Jiang Nansun's family conditions are also good, and he was raised from a young age according to typical wealthy ladies. 
so her accumulated knowledge and family background are sufficient to support her to delve deeper into this subject. However, what made Li Guodong somewhat regretful was that after chatting with Jiang Nansun earlier, Jiang Nansun said that she had agreed to teach her professor Dong and take the postgraduate entrance exam for him. This has made Li Guodong feel a little disappointed. Old Dong naturally knows that person. He is a highly qualified basic professor in the school. Although he may not be as good as himself in the academic community, Li Guodong also values a sense of conformity when accepting disciples. Since Jiang Nansun is unwilling, Li Guodong naturally won't force it. As for Zhu Suolok forget it. That girl is still failing the exam now. I don't know if I can get my graduation certificate this year. Thinking of this, Li Guodong looked at Zhu Suasua, who was whispering to Jiang Nansun, and his heart was filled with a sigh. Although I forcibly left this girl at school. But in the end, she just kept a college diploma for this girl. And the job this girl does is completely unrelated to the construction industry. She went to work as a salesperson. Anyway, everyone has their own aspirations and cannot be forced. Jobin ran three times before comfortably taking the last bite of his meal amidst the ghostly expressions on the faces of those around him. Chao Bin, are you okay? Even Su Chan, who has been trying to please Li Guodong, was startled and asked with concern, do you want to go to the hospital? Ah. It's nothing, just a cushion is enough, Jobin explained with a smile. Others. Dot. Jobin only realized later that his appetite was really a bit high. Scratching my head, I simply ignored it. Having a large appetite is inevitable after practicing martial arts. Although the Yi Jin Jing is only a partial fragment. And the way of cultivation is quite peculiar. But after all, this is a very advanced internal mental skill. With the increasing level of cultivation, the demand for energy is clearly very demanding. And the so dot called energy is naturally obtained through eating. Transforming food into so dot called internal forces. So as to improve one's own strength. This is also why martial arts practitioners have a large appetite. After all, only by eating more can one gain more energy. Simply being able to eat, but not being able to clear, leads to obesity. Simply dredging without eating can lead to insufficient income and illness. So being able to eat and practicing martial arts is actually equivalent. Of course, if you really can't eat, having money is also possible. Any aged ginseng, Ganoderma lucidum, or natural treasures that can improve internal strength are considered excellent products. Unfortunately, Ling Hu Chong is just a wanderer in the martial arts world and does not know this alchemy technique. So even if you really get some kind of natural material and treasure, it's probably just a matter of swallowing it in one gulp. However, doing so is obviously very wasteful. If it is turned into a pill, not only will the effect be improved, but the key will also be to obtain more. However, wild ginseng has almost disappeared now, and relying solely on artificially cultivated ginseng has poor medicinal efficacy. I don't know if there are any obsession treasures about famous doctors such as Ping Yiji and Hu Qingyo. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Ruins during the Kangxi period, seeking follow.up reading. You are listening at novel full.audio. Chapter 10 Ruins during the Kangxi period, seeking follow.up reading, if there are, we can consider cultivating artificial medicinal materials. One is for self-consumption, and the other can be used to make money. After all, pills are already a very profitable business. Speaking of it, it's also heartbreaking. That kind of big doctor is probably gone now. A physician's license would shut down most major doctors. However, everyone knows that traditional Chinese medicine cannot be quantified in any way. Take an ordinary warm cold as an example, Different traditional Chinese medicine has different prescriptions. Different prescriptions have different effects and durations. The cost is also different. How could it be standardized under such different circumstances? A warm cold is like this, what about the rest? 
don't forget that there are roughly two types of colds. Warm and windy cold. This is also a university subject in itself. So now the so dot called standardized traditional Chinese medicine is called hu lai. Thinking of miscellaneous matters in his heart, Jobin couldn't help but be a bit distracted. Until I heard Su Chang's call in my ear. Wake up. Let's go. Ah. Oh. Jobin regained his senses and apologized somewhat awkwardly, Director, I'm sorry, I lost my mind. What are you thinking? So obsessed. Physician's license, Jobin said truthfully. Su Chang. Dot. It's nothing, just lamenting that traditional Chinese medicine is no longer effective. Oh, it's good to know. Don't go to medical school, don't get beaten, Su Chang nodded and said casually. Xiao Bin. Dot. Quickly, everyone got into the car. Of course, it's still the same seat as before. Originally, Xiao Bin thought that since it was a site, it should be in the suburbs, but to his surprise, this time the site was actually in the bustling city area. Not only did Xiao Bin feel surprised, but even Su Chang had some doubts. Teacher, is this archaeological site actually located in the bustling city? Su Chang asked curiously as he drove. Mmm. Li Guodong responded and then smiled, you'll understand when you get to the place. In confusion, everyone quickly arrived at the place. A bustling section of Yangzhou city has been isolated by a quarantine zone. Seeing five people walking over, the staff welcomed them. What person? Hello, I am Su Chang, the director of the Magic City School of Architecture. This is my teacher, Professor Li Guodong, and these are also Professor Li's students. Su Chang took out the documents and handed them to the staff. The staff took a careful look and immediately lifted the isolation belt with a smile. It's Professor Li, you're here. Please come in quickly. Five people walked in one after another. A few people had just entered when a young man walked over. Hello Professor Li. The young man saw Li Guodong and was refreshed, quickly welcoming him. Hello, Li Guodong smiled and nodded, as if he had seen it before. The young man's gaze fell behind Li Guodong. When I saw Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua, my eyes lit up. Subconsciously, he started tidying up his collar. Jobin curved his lips and looked aside. He is afraid of laughing himself. Just as Jiang Nansun and Zhu Suasua looked inexplicable, an inquiry came from the room surrounding a group of people. Is it old wood coming? Old drunkard, you're not dead yet. Li Guodong joked with a smile. Su Chang explained to several people in a low voice. That's the teacher's classmate and old friend, and also a big shot in the industry. A few people are clear about it. After all, with Professor Li's position in the academic community, it is obvious that he will not make friends with any weak chickens. Cut. Even if you die, I won't die. Before he could finish speaking, an old man wearing protective clothing walked out. Teacher. The young man quickly welcomed him. Well, my disciple, Zhao Junsheng. The old man explained to Professor Li. As he spoke, he took off his mask. Show a very old face. I actually feel older than Professor Li. Professor Li introduced with a smile, this is Zhou Jiangwo, who specializes in linguistics. Hello Professor Zhou, the three younger generations saluted. He he, hello. Zhou Jiangwo smiled and nodded. How is it now? Li Guodong asked directly about the matter. Preliminary examination, it was during the Kangxi period. Is it so long? Li Guodong was somewhat surprised. In ancient times, wooden structures were mainly used, but after such a long time, there were still many, and they were still in the bustling city this is very strange. Hey, forget it, you'll know when you go in, Zhou Jiangwo said with a bitter smile. This time, it's been quite a commotion. Li Guodong looked at his old friend with a strange expression, not knowing why he was in this mood. 
and behind him, Xiaobin raised his eyebrows lightly when he heard that it was actually during the Kangxi period. Subconsciously, he touched the three dice in his pocket. At this moment, it seemed to sense something, and the three dice were also slightly hot. Fortunately, it's daylight now and there are clothes covering it, so no one noticed. You guys wait outside first, I'll go in and take a look. Although Li Guodong was a bit puzzled, he finally put on his protective suit and walked in. A group of people stood awkwardly and politely on the side. After five minutes, Li Guodong walked out. As she took off her mask, she sighed deeply. Teacher. Su Chang asked in a low voice. Well, it's confirmed that the style was indeed from the Kangxi period, Li Guodong said with a smile. It should be a wealthy family with a considerable area. Professor Li, Xiaobin couldn't help but ask, what will happen here in the future? After all, it's a site. It will be built into a museum in the future, Li Guodong said with a smile. Do you want to go in and take a look? Mmm. Jobin nodded. After all, it's not my responsibility here. I'll go ask, Professor Li explained with a smile. After Professor Li left, Zhao Junsheng took the initiative to speak up and said, I'm sorry, three classmates. After all, this place has just been unearthed, so we can't go in too many people, but... Jobin didn't even look at him. Then let's take a stroll on the side, Zhu Suasua took the initiative to stand up and say. Hey. I don't. Zhao Junsheng wanted to say something more, but Zhu Sualua had already pulled Jiang Nansan towards the isolation zone. Jobin also silently followed. Leave only someone in the wind messy. Nansan, do you believe it or not? What he was about to say was that we can go in, but someone can't. Isn't that right? Someone. Zhu Suasua looked at Xiaobin with a sideways glance. Jobin showed a sunny and healthy smile. Senior, I'm a bit thirsty. Do you want something to drink? asked Jobin. I feel a bit sleepy at noon. Can I have a can of Red Bull and a bottle of Nutritional Express for Nansun? Lock it. Jiang Nansun was speechless. What does this have to do with her? Also, why buy her some Nutrition Express? Go, go. Zhu Sualua took out a twenty from his pocket and handed it to Jobin. Senior sister, aren't you hitting me in the face? Xiaobin felt a little helpless. Stop it. You're not my boyfriend, why should you spend money? I don't want to be fooled by you. Lock the lock. Jiang Nansun pulled at the Zhu lock with a ridiculous expression on his face. The more this guy talks, the more he goes too far. Oh, all right, all right, hurry up and go, the remaining money will be counted as your tip. Senior sister, that's too much. I don't have any change. Besides, you probably don't want to add me to WeChat, do you? Zhu Suasua asked with a teasing expression on his face, and then said mysteriously, that's not in front of Nan Sun either. Let's do it privately. He even gave Xiao Bin a flirtatious glance. Jiang Nansun was completely speechless. Just turn around and don't bother to talk to her. Xiao Bin Guan Air. Knowing that Zhu Suasua is just teasing his best friend. After receiving the money, he turned around and went to the store. Although this street was sealed off, it was not far from the neighboring street. At his speed, he came back in five minutes. But when Xiao Bin returned, he realized that Zhao Junsheng had been entangled again. Jobin shook his head and walked over with a box of milk tea. Ha! So much! Zhu Sualua, who was originally looking helpless, couldn't help but brighten up when he saw Jobin. After seeing the whole box of milk tea in Jobin's hand, he instinctively exclaimed in surprise. Lock Lock Senior Sister, your Red Bull. Nansun Senior Sister, your. Nutrition Express. I, thank you. Although Jiang Nansun wanted to refuse, he hesitated for a moment and continued. Jobin carried the remaining milk tea and distributed it to all the staff. 
Although it is spring now, the weather today is a bit gloomy. Drinking a cup of milk tea can also keep you warm. Zhao Junsheng looked at the milk tea in his hand, his face changing again and again. At this moment, Li Guodong and Zhou Jiangwo walked back together. Oh, Xiao Bin has spent money, Zhou Jiangwo said with a smile, knowing what was going on. He he, it's okay, two teachers, please. Xiao Bin handed over a bag of drinks. Ha, I happen to be a bit sleepy just now. Let's have a drink of Red Bull. Zhou Jiangwo picked up a can of Red Bull with a smile, but didn't drink it. Li Guodong shook his head and casually took a bottle of milk tea. Let's go in and take a look, Li Guodong said casually, holding milk tea. Can we go straight in? Zhou Bin was a little curious. Well, it used to be to ensure that some cultural relics wouldn't be damaged, but now it's okay, Li Guodong explained to Xiao Bin as he led the four people into the tomb. Zhao Junsheng, who was still trying to speak, was pulled aside by Zhou Jiangwo. Still don't understand. Zhou Jiangwo said, and Zhao Junsheng's face became ugly. After sighing, Zhou Jiangwo said softly, If you don't have this ambition, I won't force you either. Unfortunately, you haven't taken the path you want to take well either. Zhao Juanqing's face was full of doubt. Do you know why I didn't stand up for you? Zhao Juanqing shook his head. Because you didn't stand firm. After Zhou Jiangwo finished speaking, he walked towards the ruins. Zhao Juanqing, who only left one person dumbfounded in place. Equals Li Guodong walked into the site with four people. It is said to be a site, but in fact, it is more like an underground building. The site is located two meters underground. It is precisely because of this that it was not discovered. The house above is just a modern building, it doesn't matter. Everything inside the furniture has been moved away, and a large pit has been dug underground. As he walked down the stairs, Li Guodong explained, you can see from the rock and soil layers here that there have been floods or floods here before, and earthquakes have occurred, and the houses have been buried underground. Teacher. Su Chang asked curiously, how did you discover it so deep? The homeowner above planned to dig a well in the backyard, but ended up digging this. Arriving at the bottom, he pointed to the stone lion in front of the door and said. Jobin's eyes were sharp and he saw a new mark on the head of the stone lion. Fortunately, the homeowner above did not act recklessly, otherwise this stone lion would have been destroyed. End of this chapter